Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I was going to show you how I made this card which was I think number one in my uh, week four challenge that I did recently um, but when I was getting everything ready I started playing as one does and this single layer finished up as three layers and I thought it was just so pretty I have to share it with you. So the card pieces that you're going to need, the card base is elegant eggplant and that measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarters scored and folded in half. There's a layer of whisper white which is four inches by five and five eighths and then this piece is from the old style um, designer series paper stack and this measures three and seven eighths by five and a half inches. You will also need um, a piece of Wisteria Wonder that measures one and three eighths inches by two and a half inches, a piece of Whisper White that measures one and one eighth inch by two and a quarter inches, that's to make the sentiment there. You're also going to need some Whisper White for the underneath butterfly and also some of our cardstock vellum for the butterflies. So to get started I'm going to stamp the butterfly. Now my first bit of advice to you is um, I've spent um, the whole of the week of challenge four stamping butterflies doing different colours and what have you and I've finished up with butterflies like this and I don't know what combination I've used on these. So when you are doing this, do make sure that you write down how you've arrived at your colours. Like this, for example. This one was always artichoke, and that was stamped off once. Then it was mint macaroon, stamped off once. And then mint macaroon again in the middle. And I've done that. A bit of glue on that. Um, I've done that for that one. That don't take any notice of my scribble. Um, I've done it for this one and for this. And the one we're actually doing is this. So at least now I know the others. I've got to go back and try and work out what it was I did. Um, so I'll keep that there. So I know what I'm doing. I started off with elegant eggplant. Let's move that over a little bit. And the stamp set I'm using is the Watercolour Wings, which is this one. And I'm using this stamp, this one and this one. It says it's two-step stamping, but it is actually three-step. It's like the little ones, there's three there as well. So I'm going to start off with the outside stamp with Elegant Eggplant. and just stamp that. With these photopolymer stamps you don't need to push it really hard. I just like to give it a little while to actually absorb the ink. And then my next stamp I'm going to use is the solid one and I should have some paper here so that I can stamp off and I'm going to use Wisteria Wonder for this. I have to make sure that I keep closing up my inks as I go along because the amount of times I've finished up stamping the wrong colour on the wrong bit. Okay, so I've got Wisteria Wonder. I'm going to stamp off and then I'm coming in on top. It's relatively easy to uh, line up as you get your stamp closer and closer um, you just line up the round bits as it you just line up like the lighter wisteria wonder there line that up with the dark one there and then that one if, oops let's bring that back so that's how they all go there we go and I like the way Stamping Up have done these stamps. They've done it so that you get all this lighter and darker bits. Um, 
at, yeah, not the attention to detail, but the amount of detail that Stamping Up put into their stamps is just brilliant. Now, um, I'm on to Wisteria Wonder again, but this time I'm not going to stamp off. Okay, so I'm trying... You see how these top bits are going up? I'm trying to line those up with these darker bits here. press. There we go. That one fell a bit short but that's all right. Don't worry about little things like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to die cut that out with my Big Shot. Let's move that out of the way a minute. And I'm going to use the die that comes from the Bold Butterfly Framelits dies, which was, oops, which was designed to go with this set. So that comes out nice and easily. Nice white all the way around there. Now before I move on with the rest of this card, because I've already die cut my three vellum butterflies, so that's all ready to go, I wanted to just show you another bit of my um, Week 4 challenge. I showed on my blog this card and I showed uh, explained that I'd used one of the stamps from the Gorgeous Grunge set to stamp onto my cardstock before I actually punched it out. It just gives it a little bit of detail. So I'm just going to do that now. Um, in fact, I should have stamped it before. But this is a stamp I'm using from Gorgeous Grunge. And I'm going to use Wisteria Wonder. that and all I'm going to do is as I'm using my big shot as a surface I'm just going to stamp on there just to give a little bit of a pattern and then I'm going to die cut that out with the very fancy butterfly this one which comes out of this set which is the butterflies thinlets you get three in this one um, did I leave a I know one of these I was hoping to leave the um, wax in there I always use a sheet of wax paper when I'm using such a delicate um, die and I have been told that if you can leave the um, wax in there, you can use it again. I've not tried this bit before, so let's hope the person who said that was right. She's a very good card maker, so um, no reason why it shouldn't work. move this out of the way first. Okay. What do I do with my card? Let's put that back there. Don't need 
that bit. Yes, yeah, she's correct. Well done. Okay. That's another great tip. Just pop all these bits out. So can you see how there is just a nice little bit of detail on that? Um, so if I was doing that onto this card, this is what it would look like. Okay. So that was just a little, um, I digressed a bit there, but that's okay. Um, right, I can see that I turned that over that side, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Let's just get the white layer on first, then I'll decide. I'll use my snail for this. And I know this isn't going to run out on me on this video because I've just put a new one in. I think that's probably about the first time that has actually run out when I've not been doing a video. Okay, so let's just line this up. Okay, so I'm going to have... Oh, that's okay. Just not something on the floor now. Shall I do it like that or like that? I think I'll change it. I do like doing things differently. Right, okay. So the next thing I will change my pattern. If, like my one, you have a directional pattern, do make sure you're doing it up the right way. Mine is writing. So make sure I do that correctly. So that's that. Now with the doily, what you need to do is cut it in half. I put mine through my, uh, I use a guillotine to do all my cutting. And if you have a look at these, the, our doilies, on these big plain holes, we have three holes. Okay, there's two and a big one. What I've done with mine, I put mine in and I sliced it from that big hole straight down through that big hole don't have to do it because I've already done it here. So this is my one. Okay, so you can see where I've cut it through the holes. Can you see that? I think you can. Yes, you can. Okay, so I'm going to adhere this to my card base. And what I do is just a little bit of um, snail on the solid flowers and one little bit there and I line that to the edge just so it looks as if it's white onto white there like that and then same on the other side only this time I'm going to try and get them level this one on this side is a bit lower than this one Right, let's pay attention. So it's one, two, three, four, onto the fourth line. One, two, three, four. So it comes down to A. So that should be level. Okay. It, I think that this looks like butterfly, extra wings on the butterfly, don't they? Don't you think? Right, okay. So next thing I'm going to do is adhere my butterfly
I like to fold mine so that I get the straight bit at the bottom here ready for my gluing and I do that with these ones as well. What I have decided with this one, whereas I've used rhinestones on the body of the butterfly, this one I'm going to use pearls. I like to ring the changes when I'm doing my cards. Just to see which I think looks better. Could have got that folded ready, couldn't I? Never mind. So what I'm going to do is Tombow liquid glue. Um, oh, that should be all right. Let's see. Oh yes, that's fine. So put one down. The body on this very delicate butterfly is fractionally, absolutely fractionally smaller than the big, what I'll call the painted butterfly. That came out a little bit quick. Let's see if I can... I don't want it all oozing out as I put the butterflies on. Hopefully wiping that one through would have taken quite a bit of the glue off. That looks all right. Okay, so there's my butterfly. Don't you think that's just gorgeous? So delicate. Okay, so next thing is actually adhere this to my card. And I'm going to place this in the centre. As I say, I think it looks like more butterfly wings. Let's use this to adhere it down. I've got some, um, excuse me while I just get some kitchen towel. What I do is, if I have what can only be described as a leak, I will scoop it up with my either my paper piercer or my tweezers. It depends what I'm using at the time. I know that it dries uh, clear, but it does dry shiny too. I will go over that afterwards with a very, very small piece of adhesive rubber. What I did, I cut one of mine so that I've got small little bits so that I can get into these little areas. So that I'm going to put pearls on. And I think I will use the... What shall I use? I think they'd be too big, won't they? Those are too small. I must have one that's in between those two. Definitely. No, that is the next size down. So that's the one that I can cut as a strip. So how many do I think that's going to be? Looks like about eight. Two, four, six, eight. We'll soon find out. Let's put that down before it close it up rather before that goes dry. eight I think it could do with two more no I think I'll stop at one 
Okay, so that was nine. Just about right, I think. Okay, the last bit to be done is the sentiment, and I've used the Have a Happy Birthday from Birthday Blossoms. This just steps, stamps absolutely brilliantly. And to save a bit of time, what I've done is I've actually done it beforehand. So what I did was, on my piece of paper that I gave you the measurements a few minutes ago, um, which I seem to have... Oh no, here we go. What I did was I stamped it onto here, um, then I rounded the corners using my Project Life corner rounder. And then I did the same to this layer, the Wisteria Wonder, laid it on, finish up like this. It's a lovely sentiment. I mean, you know, the way it's been done. So I've put four dimensionals on the back. There you go, there's today's card. Um, which do you prefer? Rhinestones or pearls? I think I'm still in favour of pearls. Um, I just love the pearls. So there we go, there's today's card. I hope you like it. I hope you decide to give it a try. Um, many thanks for watching my video today. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me. As always, I will be happy to help you. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button, which will be either at the right-hand side of the screen or, depending on what you're watching the video on, um, it may be underneath the screen. If you'd like to buy any of the products that I featured here today, please visit my 24-7 online stamping up shop, the link for which is on the screen now. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.